Okay guys, hi and welcome to another video for some quick logic tips. Um, somebody asked in the comments section about uh, synchronizing audio better, tightening the timing of audio, quantizing audio and all that stuff, right? So I'm going to show you some basic fundamental stuff in logic for those kind of things, right? Not the super in-depth, we're just going to cover the basics. So here in this project, I've got this drum track with a straight beat. Right, then I've got this other drum track here with a swing beat. Right, let's use the straight beat. And then I played a guitar along with that, but I played it with bad timing. Then I've got a bass that I played with bad timing to the same drum track. Right, tightening tracks to a groove master. Usually you tighten to the drum track. so. This is the drum track. We need the Groove Master track. Now, to bring up the Groove Master track, all right? We just we just right click on the background of any track header. Or if, like me, you've got your right click assigned to bring up your toolbox, then you Control Left click on the background on any track header. Boom! Bring up the shortcut menu. Go to Track Header Components. Show Groove Track. Now nothing happens, but now when you mouse over the track numbers, the star appears. Whichever track you tick the star, that becomes the groove master, the groove track. So we're going to make it this drum track with a straight beat. Boom. That's now got the star. It's the groove track. Every other track gets a tick box, and if you tick it, that track will be forced to the timing of the groove track, which is the drums. So now I can tick the guitar. See how it moves? The guitar audio when I tick that. It moves to go onto the quarter beats and the bass. Same thing, it moves to go onto the quarter beats. And now my bass and guitar have been tightened to the drums. Now your playing won't be that out as much as I've played. I've played it well out, but it's still correcting it. Okay, but this will just tighten everything up really tight, usually to the drums, right? So now the bass and guitar are tightened to the drums. Guitar as well. Without the groove of tightening, now one thing to note: if we just zoom in at the beginning of this guitar track, the first hit is out, and even if I tighten the, the guitar track like that, it brings all the other guitar hits onto the onto the beat tight, but it always misses out the very first one. If the very first guitar or bass lick or vocal lick is out the very first one at the very beginning that often will not get tightened to the to the front we have to do that manually everything else gets tightened but not that first hit so to tighten this first hit manually double click on the bit of audio there it is in the editor zoom right in at the beginning right and see that line there when i mouse over it it puts that you see this handle with the cross at the top? That's one of the transit markers that's been used to drag this second hit onto the second beat. But the first hit here isn't on the beat because the marker is right there at the front. So we've got to get that marker. And if we grab it and then drag it, the bit of audio snaps to it. And then drag it forward as we can. And you see the front of the bit of audio, the little bit of audio trapped between the begin this, this hit and there starts to go red because it's getting really compressed. Don't worry about that. Let go and the warning appears telling you that tiny little bit of audio that makes no difference, it's not actually just a bit of noise, has been crushed really a lot in time. Don't worry about it. Okay, and that first it has been brought right onto the money on the first beat now. So that's how to use the groove track to tighten up your guitar and bass. To a drum track usually that you, you tighten to the drum track but if you played a bass line to the drums and all the notes are right the timing's good but you've played the bass with a slight forward push or a sl or, you're, or you're holding back the bass a little bit so you're playing slightly in front of the beat or slightly behind the beat you can make the bass the groove master and the drums will shift the kicks and snares very fractionally to follow that slightly push ahead feel or slightly held back feel right but usually you're tied to the drums
Okay, that's uh, some stuff you can do. That's using the groove track, right? Um, let's get rid of these two. Let's turn off these first and get rid of these two tracks. I want to keep that bit of audio. Boom. And I want to keep that bit of audio. Boom. Okay, let's look at something else. Here's my project audio. To import any loops into your project audio, you just go to your project audio here, audio file, add audio file, browse your hard drive, find the audio file you want or the multiple audio files you want, and import them. Now, uh, I've got a drum loop here. Right. We bring it on to, into, just drag it into this area and it will create its own track. Boom. Now, what if you want audio to speed up or slow down to match the tempo? Well, this is a, a two-bar loop of drums recorded at 120. The tempo is 120, so it fits a two-bar cycle range perfectly, and it loops round and round. OK, now I've wanted this to change tempo. So I changed the tempo. Let's change it to 140. The audio doesn't change tempo. Slow down the tempo, let's slow down to 100. The audio doesn't change tempo. To get, let's go back to the natural tempo of 120 for the loop. To make this change tempo, we flex it. Put on the flex, flex and grind, bump and grind DJ. Put on the flex, put the flex on for the track. All right, the analysis lines appear, those subtle lines which are analyzing where the transient hits of the drums are there. See them, those light gray lines. And now the flex is on. If we change tempo, this loop will speed up and slow down. So let's make the tempo 100, slower, quite a lot slower. OK, now, when you put flex on, it automatically goes to this default flex time automatic slicing. And if you look, the slicing makes gaps, so it's leaving behind this little transient of that hit there, and it's leaving behind that little transient of that hit there as it slices it onto the beats. So now you choose a different... Now, this is when you slow down a loop, you tend to get this, but... It can happen when you speed up as well. Find the right algorithm that sounds good. So let's try monophonic, and the slicing goes away like that. But that's giving it a slight flangey sound. So let's try rhythmic. Much better. So I've got the right algorithm. And now I change tempo. 140, it speeds up. 180 BPM, it speeds up. Yeah, whatever tempo I set, this loop just speeds up or slows down. Right, that's how you do that, you just flex. But now we've got flex on this piece of audio, we can quantize it. I can quantize it to anything I want. It doesn't mean it will, will necessarily match drums, but I can quantize it to anything I want, no matter how wacky, and it might create all sorts of weirdness. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we can quantize this. So it's kind of, you know, if I want to really tighten this up, I can quantize it to 16. So select that region, go to the region parameter box here, quantize it to 16 and it will just tighten it up that little extra well let's slow the tempo down to 130 so that quantize has just made it super tight and you can't really hear it but it is All right but i can make it something like 16 swing c let's try that but there's no 16ths so that doesn't work so let's try an eighth swing c So you can quantize audio, but don't expect miracle results, right? If your piece of audio has got no sixteenths in, then sixteen swings won't work. If it's only got eighths in, only eighth swings will work, etc. Right? So you can quantize a piece of audio. Select the audio when the flex has been put on it. Give it a quantize up here. Right. Turn off the quantize. Now let's turn the flex off for this track. Okay, and now that the flex is off, 
it no longer follows the tempo. The tempo is 130 and it's too long now for the two bar cycle loop. It's not, it's not speeded up to match. Right, okay. But what do you, you know, you have to put the flex on and then a piece of audio will speed up or slow down, but Apple loops do that automatically. So if you want to make any loop into an Apple loop, you just do it like this. Get your loop, in this case, this is a two bar loop recorded at 120, so I'll set the tempo to 120. And now it perfectly cycles around a two bar loop because it's two bars long and the tempo is correct. And now we can just make this into an Apple loop. So you right click on this audio region, or if like me, right click is assigned to your toolbox, you control left click on the audio region. Shortcut menu, add to loop library, boom. But sometimes when you do this, you can't choose loop here. It's selected as one shot and greyed out. You can't choose loop. And you must choose loop for it to become a loop and automatically change with the tempo when you bring it in to a project. Why will it not let me make it a loop? Well, the reason is, is that this looks like it's exactly two bars in length. Even if I zoom in quite a bit, it looks like it's exactly two bars in length, right? But it isn't. I can guarantee you it's either slightly too long or slightly too short. Let's look at the very zoom right in and look at the end of that second bar. And as we zoom right in, we start to see actually it's a little bit longer than two bars. So to get it to snap exactly to the end of a bar, and it must be, for, to make a loop into an Apple loop, it must be one bar, two bars, four bars, eight bars in length exactly. To snap this end exactly to a bar, we go to the snap menu here and we choose snap regions to absolute value. So that's ticked, and then you choose beat or bar. I'm going to choose beat, and when you snap that, it'll snap exactly to the end of the bar. Boom, like that. Now it's exactly on the end of that bar. Now we can make it into an Apple loop. Put out the shortcut menu, add to loop library. Now we can choose loop. Okay, it's a drum loop, so I'm going to put it in the category all drums. Beats, you can give it a character as well if you want here. I won't bother. Give it a title. A A A A drummer loop one uh, A A A and create boom. There's a little pause, a little beach ball. Hup, it's done. Right, we don't need this anymore. Let's get rid of that. And it's in the Apple Loop library now. A A A A and there it is. A A A drummer loop one A A A. Drag it into the project, it creates its own track, boom. And whatever, I don't need to do the flex thing now. When I change tempo, this will just change tempo. Let's make the tempo 180. Boom, it changes tempo. A bit louder. Make the project tempo 200, that's mega. That's 70 beats per minute faster than the original drum loop was when I made it into an Apple loop. Make it 100. Slowing it down by 20 beats. Right, now it's an upper loop. It's in your library. You can drag it in and use it in any project and it will automatically fit the tempo. That's how you do that. Okay. Let's mute this track. Let's show you something else. Back to my project audio. I've got a funky bass loop here. Let's bring the bugger in. Drag it into the range area, right to the beginning. Let go. Boom. It creates a track. And it begins at the beginning like that. Right, funk bass. This was recorded at 120. Let's set the tempo to 120. And it's a four bar loop. So it fits exactly a four bar cycle range at 120 and, and loops around. Let's have it play to this straight beat here. Okay. Now. Uh, let's try it with this swing beat. Okay, it doesn't really work with the little lick at the end of every two bars because this drum beat's got swing and this isn't swinging the bass line. So, to this drum track has probably got 16 swing C on it. So I select the piece of funk bass put on flex, switch flex on for the bass track, 
it's now got flex if I change tempo it'll automatically change tempo 100 and, let's make the tempo 130 it speeds up 160 it speeds up etc right it'll now change tempo but again we need to choose the right algorithm for it so let's slow it down to 100 where you really start to hear the problems and again it's it's defaulted to slicing so it's made these gaps which makes that kind of blah, 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 wobbling noise right so let's choose a different algorithm let's choose rhythmic mm, let's try polyphonic yeah that's probably the best one i mean we're really slowing it down a lot now 20 beats a minute we're at 100 it was created at 120 we're slowing it down by 20 beats you get artifacts but that's the best algorithm polyphonic so now put the tempo back to 120 it's natural tempo it'll change tempo now to whatever we set the tempo but this drum beat here's got swing on now it sounds like 16 swing c so i can manually change this and quantize this bass line to 16 swing c and see if that works select the bass line region parameter box up here give it a quantize of 16 swing c and it And it's given it the last bit here where there are sixteenths in the bass pattern. It's given it swing in that bit. Do -do 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 -do. There, that swing. Do -do 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 -do. There's the swing on that last lick. And now it's sync. It sounds good, but uh, we could try just using the groove track to get the bass to match the swing drums instead. Let's take the quantize off. Bring in back our track header components. Shh. Oh, the groove track's already on. Okay, let's make that swing drum track the groove master and sync the bass to it, tighten the bass to it, match the bass to it. Boom. And it's pretty much done the same thing. Six, it's giving it a 16 swing C. So, yeah, you see, different ways you can sync audio to drums and, uh, and mess around with things like that. Yeah, How to make Apple loops how to use flex to, to get things to change time, how to manually quantize any bit of audio, just flex it, select it. Notice now that the after party drum track here is the Groove Master and the bass is synced to the Groove Master. When we choose the piece of audio for the bass and look in the quantize, the quantize value is after party because it's taking its quantize from the drum track called after party but we know we can give it any quantize we want. Eights, whatever we want. It'll sound wacky, but I could give it eight swing C. It'll kind of sound crazy, but uh, here we go. Oh, hang on, I've just turned off the groove track. Let's do that first, right? Give it some eight swing C. It'll sound crazy, but let's try it. You know what I mean? So you can quantize things, but it doesn't mean they're going to sound good necessarily. Put it back to 16 swing C, which matches the drums really. Right, and now it's manually being given a quantize that matches the drums, but I'll take that off. I'll put it back so it's matching the drum track as the groove master. Boom, and it's giving it the, pretty much the same 16 swing C. So it's now matching the swing of the drum track, but it'll also change tempo. Let's change tempo to 130. You know what I mean? So there's a whole bunch of things, right? I'm not going in deep. I'm just showing you the really basic stuff, but that should really help you to get going with these kind of, you know, tightening up your songs. And Because commercial tracks that you hear, they sound ultra tight because they use these techniques. Yes, the guitarist, the bass player play really quite good anyway, but this this using a groove track and tightening everything to the groove track just makes it ultra tight which is that kind of sound you get now in commercial recordings right but and i've shown you some other things as well how to make an apple loop how to independently quantize any bit of audio flex it to speed it up or slow it down with the tempo etc right so there's a bunch of things um basic stuff see you for the next one <laughs>